This is Pastor Donald Wayne Dickman here. A blessed Sunday to all of you all out there. I pray that you all are keeping well in the Lord. I also pray that you're running your race faithfully with your eyes set on Jesus Christ. Today, my message is entitled, Dream Your Dreams and Possess Your Promises. The text is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. None of us expected such a global pandemic that started way back in 2020 and till today, September 2021, it is still affecting the world. Many have given up and many people feel so disappointed that the things they hope for, the things they dream for have not come to pass. This is a time I believe God is working within the lives of many people. God is working in the lives of the churches. This is a time of pruning. This is a time where God is preparing us as his children for greater things, for greater faithfulness, for greater boldness, for greater victory. Hallelujah. I believe that God is calling out a people. God is calling out a remnant. God is calling out a generation of men and women that are bold, men and women that are going to be warriors and soldiers for Jesus Christ, that are able to take the promises that God has given us. This is a time to overcome every obstacle. This is a time for us to rise up and press in and believe in God and have boldness in our heart to take back whatever the enemy has stolen, to claim back whatever is rightfully ours. So I encourage all of y'all who are listening to this sermon, hold on to your dreams, hold on to your goals, hold on to your purpose that God has laid upon your heart. Hold on to your destiny. We need to rise up. We need to declare war against the enemy. We need to cast out. We need to defeat the enemy that is illegally camping in our land. I believe that each one of us has the power. Each one of us has the ability. Each one of us has the talents. God has given us the Holy Spirit to end. Power us. God has given us a name that's above every other name. The name of Jesus. So that you and I can go forth and declare victory over the enemy. As I look around, I see many people have fallen short of achieving their goals. Many people have given up on their dreams. Many people feel defeated and lost. Many people are so confused. And today, through this sermon, I want to encourage you through this sermon. I'm going to identify five important steps that will help you to rise up and possess the promises that God has given you. If you remember the story of the Israelites and the promised land, how God led them out of Egypt after 400 years of captivity. God used Moses to deliver them. God did miracles after miracles. God parted the Red Sea so that they could go through. And then when they came at the brink of crossing into the promised land, a land that Jesus, that God said, is a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a promise that God gave them. It was a dream that all the Israelites were holding on to because they desired to move from a place of captivity and bondage and slavery into a land flowing with milk and honey. But when they came to that area where Moses sent 12 spies to spy out the land, the promised land, the Bible says, then came back. And gave a report. They said, yes, the land is good. Yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey. Yes, the fruits and everything else is so prosperous and healthy. But we cannot take the land because 
the enemy is there. The land is infested with enemies. The land is full of giants. The city's wall is so fortified. We cannot take. Only two of them of the 12 came back. Joshua and Caleb said, as long as God has told us to take the land, we can take a land. Let us go forth and take the land. And because of the negative news, because of the doubts, the people of Israel became fearful. And because of that, the whole nation had to go around the wilderness for 40 years. And everyone that was 20 years and above died in the wilderness other than Joshua and Caleb. Everyone that was 20 years and above did not go into their promise did not possess their promise. Only Joshua and Caleb and the younger generation. So today, I want to use a text here. A text taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. It says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he had commanded thee. And thou shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto their fathers, to cast out the enemies from before thee as the Lord has spoken. Today I'm using this text to identify five important steps. That will enable you to progress from your dream, from your goal, from your purpose into possessing the promises. That's why I chose this title today. Dream your dreams and possess your promises. We got five vital critical points here. And I believe you listen and take to heart these points and apply it in your life. I believe you'll rise up. You'll rise up from the ashes. You'll rise up from the difficulties. You'll rise up from the defeat. You'll rise up from the hopelessness. You'll rise up from all kinds of accusation. You'll rise up from all kinds of condemnation. You'll rise up from everything that's pressing you down. And you're going to go forth and take what is rightfully yours as children of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you look at the Bible... You will see that many times God has given people his promise and they eventually fulfilled, possess that promise. We look at God who promised the Israelites a land that's flowing with milk and honey. You see Joshua and Caleb and the younger generation managed to go in and possess a land that is filled with milk and honey. You see, God gave Hannah the promise of a child. And she was a woman who received that promise. Joseph had dreams that God gave him. And at the end of the day, you and I know that Joseph received those dreams. Saw the dreams coming into reality. And that is the word of God. That is the promise of God. That is the dreams of God. That we need to move from your dreams and eventually go and possess and take and live in the promises that God has given you. The reason these men and women are in scripture is not only that they dreamed a dream. They made history because they walked with God and possessed the promise that God gave them. And that is what this message is all about. Is for you to dream the dreams that God has given you. Take those goals. Take the promises. Take the destiny that God has given you. And not only that we need to go forth from the dreams. And we need to make it a reality. We need to walk with God. We need to trust God. And we need to possess what God has promised us. Dreaming is powerful. But in order for the dream to become a reality, you need to walk with God. You need to cooperate with his purpose for your life. Today, the five points I'm talking about. The first point is stay focused on your dream, on your purpose, on your calling. We need to stay focused as many people are facing 
all kinds of turmoil, all kinds of crises, all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of challenges, all kinds of curveballs thrown at us because of this COVID-19, because of the situation, because of the political situation, the economic situation, not only hitting our country, but hitting the world. Many people have lost sight of their goals. Many people have, have come to a place where their dreams seem shattered. Many people come to a place where they seem hopeless, where they feel there is no direction in their life. They're sitting at home and not knowing what to do. Today, I want to encourage you for you to possess your promise, for you to take what is yours, for you to live in your destiny. First and foremost, you need to hold on to that goals. You need to hold on to the destiny. You need to hold on to the dreams and never let it go because that is what that's going to propel you to move towards the right direction and eventually come to a place where you walk into that promise, where you possess that promise, but we got to hold it. Never let it go. Never feel that the enemy has come and stolen it. Never feel that circumstances and situations has hindered you. Never become like the 10 spies. Remember that the 10 spies decided to let the circumstance get the better of them. Dreaming is powerful. Dreaming. Dreams, the dreams I'm talking about is the dreams that God has given you. The purpose that God has given you. The dreams I'm talking about is the goals and destiny that God has laid upon you. A dream is a vision for your life. There's a picture attached to it. You can see it. You can perceive it clearly with your eyes, with your mind's eyes. You can see your dream. And that's what we all must. We must have clarity of our dreams. We must have clarity of our goals. We must have clarity of the destiny that we are going to walk in. To dream is to keep your God-given vision in front of you. God spoke to Abraham and said in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5, look at the sky, count the stars, so shall your offspring be. That was the picture Abraham had of what God is going to fulfill in his life. And you and I know that God made it come true. Joshua and Caleb kept focusing on God's promise, kept focusing on the dream that they had, a dream of living in the promised land, a dream of coming out of a land of cop captivity and bondage coming out of Egypt and going to a land which they call their own, the promised land. They had that dream, even though they went through the wilderness for 40 years, yet they kept that dream alive within them. At the end of 40 years, Caleb was full of power and fervor and passion. And he said, give me that mountain and I will take it. These are people who held on to the dream. No matter what they face, no matter what the circumstances were, no matter how gloomy, what giants, what COVID-19, how bad the economic situation, how bad the hindrances, they kept on to the dream that God gave them because their focus was on God. Joseph was focused on his dreams. He went through all kinds of challenges, his own brother's sold him as a slave and wanted to kill him. He was falsely accused. He was put in jail. But at the end of the day, God promoted him and became the second greatest man in Egypt. The woman with the issue of the blood, she had her dream of being healed of this problem. And she had one goal and that goal was if I touch the hem of Jesus, I will be healed. She got up and she went towards that goal. She was weak. She was not supposed to be public. She pushed her way through and she eventually touched that hem and she received her dream. A dream came true. She received the healing. Blind Bartimaeus was another man who had a dream to see. He wanted to see when he heard about Jesus passing by. He cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. People tried to shut him out. 
People try to pour cold water on his passion and zeal. People try to hinder him. People try to give him negative remarks. Yet he didn't let anything stop it. He kept on. He kept on focusing on his goal, focusing on his dreams until Jesus stopped and called him. And he received that miracle. And I want to encourage you today to hold on to your dream today. Hold on to that goal that God has given you, that purpose that you have on this earth and never let it go. No matter what people say, no matter how much of negative news is there, no matter what darts are throwing at you, you're going to hold on to it because as long as God said it, he will make it come to pass. As long as God said we can take the land, we can take the land. As long as God said he'll prosper you, he'll prosper you. As long as God said he'll heal you, he'll heal you. As God, as long as God said he'll use you mightily, he'll use you mightily. As long as God said he'll let you expand your business, he'll let you expand. As long as God said He'll make you use you to preach to thousands of people and, and many souls be added. He will do it. Hold on to your dream. Hold on to your dream. Don't ever let anybody come and steal their dreams away. There are great authors who, read, who wrote great books. One author, his name is Brendan Bucard. He wrote of high performance habits. On and in this habits, the first habit, he said that a, at a a person who performs highly should seek clarity in his goals, in his vision, in his dreams. Seek clarity. We must have clarity of our dreams, our goals, our vision, our destiny. And we must hold on to it. Another person by the name of Stephen Covey, the seven habits of highly effective people. This number two habit that he identifies is begin with the end in mind. The end should be your goal, your purpose, your dream, your destiny. And you start with the end goal and never lose sight of it. Because the minute you lose sight of the end, you will go haywire. You will be fulfilling other people's dream, but not your own dream. The second point here is have faith in God's promise. As we look at the text today. As we read the stories of the spies who went out the spider land, they had a promise. A promise that God gave them that they will go and live in a land flowing with milk and honey. And we need to have faith in God's promise. Never let go of what God has given us. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 11 that God's word will not return to God void. It will definitely come to fulfillment. The promises of God, they are yes and amen. We need to remember that. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16, he says, You shall not put the Lord Yahweh to the test as you tested him at Massah. This is what Moses is advising the people. These are the things they ought to do so that they can live in that promise they can live in that covenant they can live in victory and here he says you shall not put the lord yahweh to the test as you tested him at massa in exodus chapter 17 we know very clearly when they claim came to a place which was called massa the people murmured the people complained the people wanted to stone moses because there was no water and God did a miracle eventually and caused water to come out of the rock. But that was a place called Massa where the people murmured. Murmured means they were striving with him or against him. They were murmuring. They were complaining of his providential dealings with them. Oh, sometimes we complain and require a sign or miracles to be done by him. And this is what God is telling us that we should not complain. We should not murmur like the people. This is what Moses is speaking on behalf of God. You shall not put the Lord to the test. In fact, Jesus spoke to the devil in Matthew chapter 4 verse 7. He said, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. As tempted in Massa. Remember that the children of God 
refused, the children of Israel refused to rest in the fact that God's miraculous power had brought them out of their bondage in Egypt. Facing adversity, the children of Israel exercised extreme discontent and, ex and over extreme faith. Facing adversity, the children of God, the children of Israel exercised extreme discontent over extreme faith. And this is what Moses is, is teaching them, is warning them that they should not do so that they will be able to live in the blessings of God. Ways we test God rather than choose faith. We forget God's past provision. We don't value God's present provision. We believe, we don't believe in God's future provision. We don't believe God's word, God's messenger. We forget the great miracles God has done in the past. We don't believe God can make a way where there seems to be no way. We don't believe that God can turn things around. We don't believe God can prosper, can heal, can deliver. We don't believe that God is a miracle working God. No matter how difficult it is, God is still able to do that miracle. We don't. This is when we complain and murmur. And this was the, this was the advice that Moses gave them in, in point number two is have faith in God. Don't tempt God. Don't test God. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Focus on who God is. We got to have a mindset of faith. We got to look through the lenses of faith. Whatever situations you face, you need to remember the promise that God gave you. And tell yourself, as long as God gave me this promise, this hindrances or these giants or these obstacles that is coming in my way is not going to stop me because God is surely going to make a way. Maybe I will not, I do not know at the moment how, but I'm going to trust in him because it's his word. It's his word. He's God. He's almighty God. He's all powerful God and nothing can stop him. Dreaming by his very definition means that the destiny you are dreaming about does not exist in your present reality. Moving from your dreaming to possessing requires an attitude of faith. That's where faith is so important. Moving from your dreaming to possessing requires an attitude of faith. Faith is strengthened by meditating on and confessing God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, as well as personal promise to you. We must be faithful in small things. Remember that if God gives you a dream, God gives you a goal, God gives you a purpose, what we need to do, we need to focus on the little things because you must be faithful in the little things for you to achieve the big things. If the, if the dream God has given you for your life is big, remember that your journey towards that vision will be filled with small tasks that he will give to you along the way. So we need to be faithful in the small tasks that God gives us. That's why many people, you read their testimonies. They worked here, they worked there, and every job they did, some was insignificant jobs, but that was their journey. They gave all their heart, they struggled, they sold newspapers, they worked in, 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 in McDonald's, and, and they struggled in this job and struggled in that job. And eventually, when the time was ripe and the right time, God exalted them. One good character we learn about is David. He was a faithful shepherd. The father asked him to take care of his sheep. He took care of the sheep faithfully. When the lion came, the bear came to, to eat up the sheep. He defeated the lion. He defeated the bear. He saw God's power and God's, God's ability to defeat every work of the devil. And when he walked into camp and he saw Goliath, he was not afraid because he was faithful to the little things. God used him to defeat that Goliath. So we must be faithful in the little things. And when you're faithful in the little things, God will Will use you in great things. Luke 16 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in the much. As we look at the promised land and the 12 spies, we can learn some 
important lessons on how you can possess the promises that God give it, gave you. You can go in and take the land. After 40 days, they returned with evidence. The 12 spies came back. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 27 onwards, he says, the 10 spies said it, and they told him and said, we came unto a land within our centers, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. They brought back the fruit to show the 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 prosperity of the land, the healthiness of the land. Verse 28, nevertheless, this is where the negative remarks came in. Nevertheless, sometimes we say all type, all things are good and then we'll, we'll, we'll carry on with but we merely nullify what good things we've said. Here he said, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Verse 29, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell in the, by the sea and by the coast. And then we see in verse 30, Numbers 13, verse 30, we see Caleb immediately speaks up and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess this for we are able to overcome it. Verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Verse 32, and they brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search is a land that eaten up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. This was the negative report that the 10 spies gave. Only Caleb and Joshua gave a positive report. In Numbers 14, 6 to 9, and Joshua and Caleb, that were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which flowed with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. This is the report that we get from the two spies, Joshua and Caleb. These two people gave a totally different report from the 10 spies. 10 spies went to spy out the land. 10 spies saw the same land, saw everything that is same. The land was healthy, prosperous. The giants were there. There was fortified cities and all the ites were there. They came, but, but when they came back, 10 spies gave a different report. Two spies gave the different report. Joshua and Caleb saw the giants, the walled city, and they trusted God. They saw what everybody saw, they saw giants, they saw a wall city, they saw land is blessed, land flowing with milk and honey. But their focus was on God, their focus on the promise of God. God said that we can take the land, we should not fear the enemy. God's promise is we can take, we should go and take it. We can defeat them. The enemy becomes bread to us. We should not be afraid. Of the giants. I can imagine what they're saying. We should not be afraid of the giants. The bigger they are, the harder their fall will be. The longer they are next to the Anak tribe has, the easier we will, we will be able to strike them. They will be bread and butter for us. We are going to defeat them because God is with them. But then the 10 spies looked at the giants, looked at the walls, looked at all the heights there, and they doubted God. That is a very sad picture of many people today who are facing difficulties at this time because of COVID-19, because of trials, because of crisis, because of things not working out their way. They have taken their eyes off God and the promises and their destiny and their goals and focus on the giants and they are afraid. It means that you have lost faith in God. You have lost trust in God. You're murmuring against God. And today I want to encourage you. We need to get our eyes back on God because God fulfilled his word. He took Joshua and Caleb and the younger generation into the promised land. He never failed in his word. 
The people failed in trusting them. And because of that, they didn't enter. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 to 9, this is another very important uh, section of scripture that we need always to remember. This is a time when Joshua was called to lead the people into the promised land. A time when Moses died. God said, Joshua arise for Moses is dead. And this is the this encouragement that we hear to Joshua. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As has Moses, so I'll be with you. This is God's promise to us. So we should not worry. When God gives a promise, he will be with us. I will not forsake thee. I will not fail thee. In verse 6, he says, be strong and of good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto the fathers to give thee. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses my servant commanded. Turn not from the right hand nor to the left that thou mayest prosper in whithersoever thou goest. And then in verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart out more but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9, for I commanded thee, be strong and good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, with us, so ever thou goest. This is the encouragement that Joshua had. Be strong. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. And that's what we need to have within us. In this time of difficulty, of trials, of COVID-19, of threat, we need to be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with us soever thou goest. We look at Hebrews 11, 27 about Moses, he said, By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he left Egypt, We're talking about Moses. Not fearing the king's anger, not fearing Pharaoh's anger. He persevered because he saw him. He saw God. And that's what we must do at this time. We must see God. We must look at the promises of God. We must look at the dreams that God has given us. We must hold on to it. Hebrews 4.2 it says, but the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. It talks about the Jews, the Israelites there who decided not to obey God. The message did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. Faith is so important for you to move from your dreams, from your promises into possessing your promises. We need to have faith. We cannot be a people of God who try to be logical, try to be reasonable, try to blending in the world and lose sight of faith. The minute you lose sight of faith, you'll never see the breakthroughs. You'll never live in the supernatural. You'll never see miracles happening. So we got to simply trust God. He says it will happen. We are going to believe. It might not make sense. We are going to believe. He told Abraham and Sarah, you're going to have a child at 100 years old. And Sarah, about 99, uh, Abraham at 99, Sarah at 90, they had a child. That's God's Word. He told Mary, you're going to bring forth a child and without having a relationship with man, with a man. He raised the dead. He parted the Red Sea. He multiplied all. He gave blessings after blessing all because his word says so. So I encourage you today. Trust the word of God. Hebrews chapter 3, 15 to 19 says, While it is said, today if you hear his wife, harden not your heart as in provocation. For some, when they are heard, did provoke. How be it not all came out of Egypt by Moses? But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had seen whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that he should not enter into the rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. It's very clear in Hebrews that the reason why many didn't enter the promised land because of unbelief. That's why faith is so important for you to possess the promises of God. In, in Romans 4, 18 to 21, it speaks about Abraham, who against hope, believe in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, in verse 19 says, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Let us be a people 
just like Abraham, we are going to profess this, this words and be fully persuaded what God has promised us, he is able to perform it. So having faith means having certainty in God's power. You want to learn to have faith, you must be certain of the God you serve. Have an intimate relationship with God. You must know the attributes of God. You must spend time reading the Bible to know your God. Not only know about God, but to know God. You must sit in his presence. You must reflect back on the great miracles he has done in the Bible through history in your life and the books you read. You must keep on focusing on the greatness of God because as long as your eyes on God, the Goliaths become like a grasshopper. If your eyes is not on God, then all the problems, all the difficulties become a giant and you will end up a grasshopper. So when your eyes on God, you can make pancakes out of the Goliaths of life. You are going to defeat them. God is going to make a way. He is, he is a God of the breakthroughs. He will make a way. So we must realize how powerful God is. God parted the Red Sea. God helped David defeat Goliath. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we then say to this? If God be with us, who can be against us? Jeremiah 10, verse 12 to 13. He that made the earth by his power, he had established the world by his wisdom, and has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttered his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heaven, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the winds out of his treasure. Second Chronicles 20, verse 6, he says, And he said, O Lord God, our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? That is the power of God. Having faith in God, we must have confidence, in, not in God's power, but in God's goodness. We must realize that by submitting to God's direction, it always turns out for good. The Bible says, in, in, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God has a plan for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That is God's desire. God has the best purpose or intent for us as a child. He doesn't have some evil type of attitude. He just wants us to suffer. No, God wants things to turn out for good. Maybe he allows things to happen because he wants us to grow in our faith, grow in our character. But at the end result, he always turns out things. All things will turn out for good for those who love God and those who are called by his name. Remember that we serve a good God. We serve a wonderful God. We serve a loving God. We serve a forgiving God. He, the Bible says in Romans 8.32, He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. All. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God can go to the extent of even spare, giving his son for us, what more will he do for all of us? So let us realize that we serve a loving God, not an evil God, not a wicked God, not a God that just wants to pound us on our head with some huge hammer or, or, or something. He is a good God. He's a loving God. He desires the best for us. He's like our loving father multiplied millions of times. He loves us so much. So let us remember that. The next thing for us to have faith, we must have boldness to enter God's provision. We must have boldness to step into where God called us to do. Sometimes it's like the people, the 10 spies were afraid because it's a new place. There were giants, there were fortified cities, there were the ites and all kinds of enemies. They were afraid to face this, this gigantic army of giants. But we must have boldness. As long as God said that's the promise, we are going to walk in. Because why? as long as God said God is with us and God is with us, nobody can stand against us. Amen. So we must have boldness. Remember when Jesus died, what happened? The curtain that separates the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place was torn from top to bottom. What does it signify? It signifies that you and I can go into the Holy of Holies. You and I can go into the presence of God. We don't need to go to a rabbi. We go, don't need to go to another person. We can go directly to the Father and commune to Him. We have have that boldness to go into the presence of God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So this is this is what faith means. Faith means we have boldness to enter God's provisions, boldness to enter into God's promises and the direction He's given us. We must have trust in God's wisdom. God 
might tell us things that will blow our mind that will not be like what the world is teaching us or what everybody is telling us but we are going to do it why because it's God's wisdom many times we give excuses because we are afraid we say we must use wisdom and by using wisdom we evade from taking risks we evade from going boldness we, we going in with boldness we evade from facing giants we evade from facing difficulties because why we give an excuse we must have wisdom but many times by giving this statement, we will never be able to move mountains. We'll never be able to defeat giants. We'll never be able to see the miracles. The only way you can see miracles is when you simply follow God's wisdom and not man's will. Not the crowd, but what God says. Follow God's wisdom. We must be bold. Step number three is obey the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 17, he says, You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. This is the third step that we need to follow or adhere to. That is we must obey the word of God. Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Ways to keep God's commandment is we read God's word on a regular basis, chunks and chunks. We reread God's word. We meditate on God's word. We read and wait on the Lord, the Holy Spirit to reveal the spiritual truths, the Rema word to come alive, to convict us. We live in God's word. We obey God's word. We must be a people who are people of the word. Not only the Bible, but also God can prophetically speak into our life. God can speak into our heart and we need to simply follow. And when you follow in obedience, you will see the miracle. In verse 18, And you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord Yahweh, that it may go well with you. Part of verse 18. So in Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, we see Caleb. We look back at Caleb. The Bible says here that Caleb followed God wholeheartedly wholeheartedly they emphasize the point of following God wholeheartedly and that represents the type of people that will be able to take the promised land that you have faith and you follow God wholeheartedly you don't murmur you don't complain you don't find shortcuts or other ways based on what the crowd is saying you just do what God tells you God said it I'll do it God said, go here. And God said, give that person. God said, call off that person. God said, give this amount to the ministry. I will do it. I'll simply do it. Even though it hurts me, even though I don't have that much. But as I obey God, you are going to step into the supernatural and see the breakthrough. Proverbs 3, 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Remember, faith is not just expectation. It is expect action. You got to put Feet to your faith. You cannot say, I have faith, I have faith, and you don't do. I have faith in God, that God will provide, but you don't give. You cannot say, God, I have faith, God will heal, but you don't walk in that healing. You cannot say, God, you cannot say, God, God will protect me, and then in your heart, you're living in fear. Faith is action. What you believe you're going to do, you're going to walk into it, you're going to profess it, you're going to claim it, you're going to believe it. That is faith. Putting feet to your faith. Joshua 1.8. The advice that's given to Joshua when he took over the role of Moses, when he's supposed to lead the people in the promised land. In verse chapter, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he says, The book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. How to have good success? How to be prosperous when you start? To meditate on the word. They say, he says in the book of law shall not depart our mouth, but thou shalt meditate day in day out. Thou mayest observe to do according to all. You meditate, you observe, not only that you do. When you start to do, the Bible said, then you shall have good success. Then you shall have prosper. How for us we prosper? How for us we be, be successful? We need to get into the word. We need to meditate on the word. And we need to do according to the word of God. Then you're going to be prospered. Then you're going. You don't bother of all the things that are happening. How gloomy, how negative, how impossible. Forget about it. Just get into the word of God and just do what the word tells you. Keep doing what the word tells you. Eventually you'll see that miracle because God's word cannot fail. God's word will never fail. God's word will surely come through. Believe me.
I mean, I've been in full-time ministry for more than 20 years, living by faith, trusting God to provide all our needs. And God never failed throughout these 20 years to different means, to different people. God has convicted hearts, have convicted people. The times when I needed a lot, God gave. The times I needed less, God gave. God always gave. But we, what we need to do, we need to be faithful. We need to keep doing. You cannot sit at home and, and shake your legs and do nothing and forget about God's purpose, God's word. Do not obey. You cannot see the blessing. You cannot be present. You cannot be successful. You cannot be an impact. You cannot change the world. We want to be a when God. You got to be obedient. You got to have faith. You got to do what God tells you. Then you see, you'll be the when God. You'll be a person that changes situation. You'll be like the thermostat and not the thermometer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many verses. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but ye transformed by the renewal of mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Exodus 15, 26 says, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and do that is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Step number four, be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you look at Numbers chapter 27 verse 18, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hand upon him. Another important step that we need to do is we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. For you to defeat the giants, for you to do great things, for you to see your goals, your, your, your purpose, your dreams, your destiny to be fulfilled. What we need is we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to learn to wait on the Lord. The Bible says, Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For you to do warfare, we need to learn to wait on the Lord. You cannot just rush into a warfare. You cannot just rush into a situation with your own methods. You got to wait on the Lord. You got to be empowered by the Lord. You got to get wisdom from the Lord. You got to get direction. That's just why it's important for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when you fill the Holy Spirit, the Holy Holy Spirit will speak, the Holy Spirit will lead, the Holy Spirit will direct, okay? It's in Psalms 23, verse 4, it says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is a fantastic verse. Here, David talks about, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That means, one is in the midst of threats, conflicts, crisis, danger. To snatch away his life, to rob him, to hurt him, to damage, to do all kinds of evil things. Yet it says the promise that God says, David said, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Isn't this encouraging? We must be able to pull ourselves away, even in the midst of conflict, and remember that God is with us. God will prepare a table with a wine spread with the best of food, and there we will be nourished by God, and there we'll listen to God with fellowship, because what is so important in victory, in a battle, we need direction from God, we need wisdom from God, we need insight from God, we need revelation from God. It's not about man, it's not about what we did last time, it's not about what people interpret, it's all about what God tells us now. And this is what he says. Fear do I walk through valley or shadow or dead, I will fear no evil. Why? Number one, God is with me. Number two, that rod and the staff, God will protect me. God's power is there with me. God's power, God will direct, God will protect. But the most important thing, God prepares a table in the presence of me. We need to put emphasis on this because the importance of spending time with God, even though the enemy is there, many of us get so caught up with the devil. We are busy binding and casting army. I'm not telling you, don't do that. But what is very important in the time of warfare is your fellowship with God. When you have fellowship with God, when you're sitting at a table and acknowledging that God is with you and as long as God is with you, nothing can touch you because God is with you. And when you're having the fellowship, the devil can 
cannot touch you. He can do all kinds of monkey tricks out there. All kinds of dances he can do. Like how the prophets of Baal and Esther did all kinds of things. They cut themselves and they tried and they danced and they jumped. Nothing happened. But when God with you, the miracle happens. So let us focus on the importance of God with us. Instead of focusing on the devil so many times. We often focus on the devil. We are busy casting out, binding, casting out devil, uh, casting out evil spirit, exaggerating the power of the devil. And we forget the importance of the table. God prepares a table in the presence of the enemy. And I'm going to enjoy God. I'm not going to bother the devil at this time. I'm going to enjoy his fellowship because as long as I'm there, as long as I know how big my God is, the devil cannot touch me. As long as I know how big my God is, I'm able to go into whatever conflict and I'll be able to defeat him because I know how big my God is. I will not lose her. I'll be like David, spending time with God and then going, able to take on the Goliaths. So this is so important. In Psalms 91, he says, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Ephesians chapter 5 5 verse 8 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. A comparison between drunk with the wine and drunk in the Spirit. We need to be, let the Holy Spirit fill us so much that we are led by the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. The Spirit gave them utterance. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Acts 4, 31. Acts 1, 8, and you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, Do not quench the Spirit. Acts 11, 24, And he was a good man, full of Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Acts 13, 52, And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And we go on and on the book of Acts, especially you see the emphasis of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is what we need before we are able to possess the promises, before we are able to go into the land where the enemy is caught in the illegal squatters are there and take back what is ours. We need to be filled. We need to be empowered. We need to fast and pray and go in and take. So let us put emphasis on being filled with the Spirit. The last point is take possession of your promises. Step number five. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 18 and 19, he says, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto the fathers, to cast out all their enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. Just as God used Joshua and the nation of Israel to defeat the enemy in the promised land, Jesus Christ came to this earth, died, paid the price, and conquered sin and death. And through Jesus Christ today, we have victory over sin and death. If you look at Joshua, the meaning of Joshua is savior. Jesus came as a savior. He came to die for us, to give us salvation. Sozo, sozo means to give us salvation. Sozo in the Bible also talks about defeating the enemy. Sozo talks about healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, blessing. Sozo, Jesus came to give us victory. And in the same way, we learn that, that Joshua was a type of Jesus here. He went to the promised land. He defeated the enemy. He took back what is theirs so that they will live in the promises of God. Joshua is a kind of a type of Jesus of the New Testament. Matthew one twenty one says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So we look at the life of Joshua. One of the main characteristics of Joshua is Joshua was a warrior for God. Jesus was a warrior for us in the New Testament. He defeated the enemy. Joshua, Jehoshua, is means savior. He was a warrior. We look at David. We learn that he was a warrior. He went to battle after battle after battle, defeating all kinds of enemy of the nation of Israel. Joshua is a warrior. We are called to be warriors. We must remember that we are called. Joshua was instructed to take back the land. So Joshua took all the land. In here we see very clearly in Joshua chapter 11 verse 16. 
the first part. And then in Joshua chapter 11 verse 23, Joshua took the whole land. Took means in, in Hebrew, laka is a very common root used to take, get, fetch, as well as lay hold or seize. This describes the major campaign is to destroy the main kings and the armies. Once the armies were defeated, the main cities are taken and they have inhabitants killed. But the rest of the cities are left standing so that the Israelites can occupy them when the army completes its task of defeating the Canaanite army. You, Joshua said to take, not only take, he's supposed to divide the land. Be sure to allocate the land to Israel for an inheritance as instructed in chapter 13 verse 6 and 7. The land was supposed to be taken and then the land is supposed to be divided according to the instruction given. The land is divided to different different tribes and the last is supposed to possess. That's the title of our message. Dream your dreams and possess your promise. Possess. Third step is to possess the land that is to take up residence in the land. You don't only defeat the enemy, you don't divide the land, but you must live in the promises. Many of us are claiming that we are saved, but we are not living in the promises that God has given us in the Bible. Not living the victory that we have through Jesus Christ. We are still living in defeat. We are still living in fear. We are still not enjoying God's blessing. So here we must possess, be taken over, possess, yaras, take possession of or inherit. Dispossess the enemy. In military matters means to gain control over a certain area by conquering, expelling the current inhabitants of that area. So Joshua is supposed to possess. The people are supposed to stay. And this is what God wants us to do. My last point is we need to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Some of us, the enemy has stolen our health from us. Some of us, the enemy has stolen our peace of mind. Some of us, the enemies have stolen our finances. Our businesses have been stolen. Our deals have not been able to be closed. Our, our, our marriages are affected. Our children are affected. Many people are caught up with addiction and habits. Many people are even been attacked by dem demons or demonic attacks. The, God wants to cause breakthroughs in a break, breaking bondages casting out fear, healing us and delivering us from depression, destroying every wrong word they spoken, nullifying every arrow that is directed against us, restoring our business and the jobs that are stolen. There are a lot of things God wants us to take back because they are rightfully ours. The enemy is coming, the squatters have coming and infiltrated our land and we are living in defeat. We are living in fear. We are living as beggars out there. God wants us to go in as children of the living God and claim back what is rightfully ours and take back what the enemy has stolen. There's a wonderful song we used to sing. I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. This is very scriptural. We need to decide today to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he took for him for us we must remember that you are not alone god is with you in the bible in deuteronomy 20 verse 1 he says when you go out to fight your enemies and your and you face horses and chariots and an army greater than your own do not be afraid the lord your god who brought you out of land of egypt is with you second chronicles 20 verse 15 he says that you are not going to fight the battle alone thus said the lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you power, tread of serpents and scorpions, and of all the power of the enemy, and nothing can harm you. Luke 24, 49 says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. You tarry in Jerusalem until you endure with power from a high. In Mark 16, 16 to 18, He that believeth in me and baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. He says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and drink any daily thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Acts 1 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be witness on both Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the world. God is with you. 
The Holy Spirit is upon you. God has given us baptism of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us the dunamis power, to give us the exousia, the authority, the name of Jesus above every other name. And today we are going to rise up as warriors. Our heart is going to pound as warriors, as a heartbeat of a warrior. And we are going to go forth with boldness. We are not going to have fear because God has not given us spirit of fear, but power, love and a sound mind. We are going to take back what is ours. We are going to take back. We are going to defeat the enemy. We are going to pray like we never prayed before. We are going to fast. We are going to pray in the spirit. We are going to use the power of the word of God. We are going to use the power of the promise of God. We are going to declare the word of God. We are going to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Summit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. So today I want you to rise up with boldness and take back, take back, take back, take back that health, take back that peace, take back that marriage, take back your finances, take back your, your ministry, take back your children, take back your relationship, take back whatever the enemy has stolen. God will give you victory because why? Jesus has defeated the enemy and given us a name that's above every other name. The name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us rise up today as warriors and take back what is ours. So brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you as I covered these five points. I want you to go through these steps and apply it in your life. Don't be like the stand spies who looked at the situation and looked at the giants and looked at the fortified cities and lost sight of their God and lost sight of, the, of their promise and they came out with doubt and fear. Be like the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, even though they saw the same things, even though what the end, what the other 10 spies said was true, but they looked through the eyes of fear and doubt. You need to look through the eyes of faith and promise and God, and you will come out with boldness because as long as God said it, you can take the land. As long as God promised you, it will come through. It doesn't matter what we are facing now. It might seem very gloomy. It might seem like it's impossible, but you're still going to keep your eyes focused, your promise, your goal, your destiny, your purpose, and you see God will make it come through. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shalom. Thank you.